Hello guys and welcome to my channel. So today I thought I'd show you my basic camera raw edit. I do this normally in Lightroom, but whether you use Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom, it's the same approach, the same process, similar tools, so it's fine. You can do it in any program that you want. I can hear lots of people shouting at the screen right now, saying if you just lit it right in the first place in camera, then you wouldn't have to do all this work afterwards. I completely agree with this. But in life, sometimes things happen, sometimes you don't have the control that you would like over the lighting, sometimes things do go wrong, and I think it's a comfort to know that you have the skills to then do something in post-production to bring a photo back to life. This image I took at one of my Enchanted Evermore workshops. I was taken just behind the scenes with natural light, this was right at the end, and one of the photographers whipped out these fairy lights and it looked so magical and beautiful, and I was taken behind the scenes and I thought, you know what, I'm going to try and take an image for myself because I like the look of it, it's really beautiful. Well, I had no control over the lighting at that stage, it was already really dark, so I just took it with natural light from the angle that I was standing at and I thought I would try in post-production to make something of it. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I would approach trying to correct the problems with this photo. Okay, firstly, there's this sort of dark shadow, this blue colour on her legs, on her body, on her arm, her face, which I really don't like. You know, I want to be careful because I want to keep those lights. I don't want to destroy that effect. I want to keep the idea of light and shadow, but I don't want that horrible colour tinge and that dreary, dark shadow look. So the first thing I'm going to do is try to warm up the picture a little bit because it's really, really blue. I'm going to bring it a bit warmer. I'm also going to bring my tint up slightly to the purple side. I always think it's better to go to the purple side rather than the green side. And now we're going to lift the shadows. So let's see how much we can bring the shadows up without destroying the image. I'm always keeping an eye up on my histogram because that shows me what information I've got in my pictures and if I'm blowing out any highlights. So here I'm going to raise the exposure a little bit but I'm mindful of not blowing out any of the highlights too much. I'm not worried if a little bit blows out because those lights are going to blow out. But I just want to keep as much detail as possible in my image. This is my starting point for editing, so I want as much information in there as possible. I think there's about right. I'm going to bring the blacks up a little bit. I think about there will do. Now, I don't want to make my image too flat, I want to keep that light and dark, but I don't like this blue shadow. But I think we'll correct that in Photoshop a bit later. When I'm doing these changes, I'm looking at global changes. But I'm going to do that later in Photoshop when I can target just certain parts of the image and do that using layers. When I'm doing my basic camera raw edit, I rarely touch anything else. I'm just trying to get myself a very neutral starting point. I don't like this hue, but again, I rarely do this in the camera raw because I would rather not make a global adjustment that's going to affect you know, that colour throughout the image. I'd rather do it later on in Photoshop when I can do it as a layer and just target that water. So that's it for me. I'm just trying to get a starting point and now I'm going to do just a little bit more work on individual parts of this image. So the biggest thing for me is this horrible bluish shadow on her arm, her face and her leg. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a curves layer. I use this tool, it's very helpful. You can target which point of the curve you need to lift. It doesn't have to be too exact but if you know roughly where you are then you can just lift that point of the curve up. I'm going to invert my mask, turn it black, and I'm just going to draw over the areas where the shadow is. My preferred way of doing things is to keep my brush opacity fairly high. I can then use the opacity of the layer to bring it down to the effect I want. So I'm just targeting the areas I don't like. I'm trying to be fairly accurate with this because I'm going to do the colour change on this mask as well. So now I'm going to attack the colour and I'm just going to clip that layer to the layer below so that I'm using the same mask and I'm just going to add some yellow, I'm going to add some red because it's, at the moment it's too cool, it's too blue, too cyan, I'm just trying to add yellows and reds which are the opposite colours. 
So can you see that's a big effect, that's before and after. So now if we zoom in, we can see that's improved it. There's still problems, but that's improved it a lot. Now to go further, let's take a sample of her skin. We do that by holding down Alt and then pressing on the skin where we want that colour. Now here I will bring my opacity down. So now I'm just going to draw over the areas that are too blue and I'm going to change the blending mode to colour. I know this is way too strong at the moment, but again, I'm going to bring my opacity down. I just prefer to do things strong so I can see what I'm doing. And then I just use the opacity of the layer to bring it down to the point I want it. As you can see, that's making a really big difference using the color blending mode. It's taking out that horrible, weird, dreary, dead blue color. Just be a bit accurate with it. I'm doing this quite quickly, but just make sure you're not going over the line. So before and after. And then bring your opacity down to the point you're comfortable with it. Now just for fun, if you wanted to go the opposite way, you could try actually emphasizing the blue. If you like the blue color, you could try to get a kind of blue gel effect. So let's just have a go at this and see if it works. I'm going to take a bit of blue from her headdress. I'm going to do the same approach. I'm going to use the colour blending mode. And you can have an experiment with the blending modes as well. You know, you don't have to use colour. You can use soft light or you can use screen or colour dodge. You know, you can have a go and just see what works best. Here I think I need to lift the colours up a little bit. I think that blue just looks a bit dead, it doesn't look sort of vibrant blue, it just looks like she's a bit ill or slightly dead. So let's try a few different blending modes to see if that makes a difference, maybe colour dodge. I think we'd have to build it up with quite a few layers to get it to a suitable point to do that blue. I much prefer the neutral colour. that's the colour I'm going to go with. So now there's still a lot of problems with this image. It's better than it was but it's not great. There's also a lot of grain in this image because it was taken in the dark pretty much with natural light. To be honest though, grain doesn't bother me horrendously. I don't mind it too much and most of my images for Instagram they're tiny anyway so I don't think the grain will really show. So I don't like the composition in this image. I don't have a zoom on my camera so and from where I was standing I didn't get the best composition. You know they say never cut off a limb halfway down so I wish I would have cut off at her knee. The way I'm going to correct that is just do a different crop. I'm also going to expand my image. Expansion is something I do in virtually every photo. I think it creates a really good effect. And then I'm going to tighten my crop up and just have a play around and see where the composition looks best. Again, I'm kind of mindful that I'm probably going to end up putting this image on Instagram, which is kind of square shaped. So I'm going for more of a square shape than a rectangle. I tend to just cut how I want, I don't try to keep to any particular sizing format. So now let's have a play with that water, I don't like that cyan colour, I, really, I don't really know what I want to do with it, I don't know whether I want to go more green or whether I want to go more blue, so let's just try both and see what happens. And that's often the approach I take when editing, I just have a play around and see what I think works best. So that's with the green. doesn't grab me madly. So let's try going the opposite way, let's go more blue.
yeah I think I prefer that so now I'm inverting my mask and with a white brush I'm painting on where I want that change to show if you need to know about masking I have a tutorial on that and I'll put the link in the description below masking is so useful and if you're starting Photoshop that's one of the main things to learn it gives you so much power I think the saturation is a bit higher in that blue but I do prefer the blue colour as I say in my tutorials, if you're playing with colour, don't just do the hue, play with the saturation and the lightness as well. Again, I have another tutorial on that, which I'll also put in the description. So I think that's getting a lot better. There's still a lot of shadow here, and this is where dodge and burn can really help. And I tend to do my dodge and burn, which is a curves layer. So I'm just taking it up in the middle I will bring my pasty and my brush down a little bit for this and I'm just going to paint over areas that are dark just to bring them up a little bit. But again, I know I can play with the opacity of the layer itself just to get it exactly the way I want it. And as you can see, there's a lot of shadow on her face. I would want to tidy all of that up, but I would do that later with my skin correction in Photoshop. And build up the layers, you know, if you've done a good job here, but there's still some dark areas, I would just try a new layer, a new curves layer, and just build it up gradually, do the same approach again. Again, use that tool to find out which part of the curve you want to lift exactly, invite the mask, and then just draw over those areas again. My editing approach is always to do lots of small adjustments and put them all together. So now let's play again with colour because I still think that shadow is really kind of bluish and dreary looking. So let's try and bring a bit more skin colour into it which is yellow and reds. So often when you've got problems it's a case of just looking and trying to analyse and see what is the problem and then how do I correct it. So if something's too blue you want to correct it with yellow because that's the opposite colour. If something's too red you want to correct it with cyan. So really take some time to understand colours and Photoshop actually shows you you know what the corresponding colour is so learn that and it will be really helpful when you're looking at problems in your image that you need to fix. So now let's put all of those amendments in the group. Let's get rid of that layer because I didn't use it. I can't show the absolute beginning because I've already cropped this image but this will give you a good idea so that's before and after. So that's a really significant change. And again, at this point, I'm not trying to make this a perfect finished image. I'm just trying to get a canvas to start with. You know, a really good neutral canvas that's correct with lighting and colour that I can then build on with creative editing. So before and after. For me personally, I really enjoy editing. And for me, 50% is the photography and 50% is the editing. I hate fixing editing and here I had to do a lot of fixing. I much prefer to get things right in camera and then do creative editing. There are times when things go wrong and you don't get the effect that you wanted, you don't get perfect lighting and I think it's really useful to know you have the skills to be able to do a corrective edit if you need to. I would do some more basic fixes such as skin smoothing and you know just bringing out her features a little bit and just correcting any blemishes. I've got a lot of grain in sim which I tried to do some grain removal so that it looks a little bit better but again as I said this is going on Instagram it's a tiny image and I don't think the grain is gonna jump out at anyone too much. So I hope that was useful guys. I hope that shows you how I approach problems that I can see in images and how I get my basic starting point and that's where we started and that's where we ended up. If you enjoyed that guys please do subscribe to my channel and please write in the comments if you want to see anything particular on my channel and I'd love to see your work so please do tag me in your images if you use these techniques. Many thanks, bye bye.